In quantum atom theory, infinity is not a mathematical paradox, but an actual reality of our universe. Each individual atom of our universe creates the infinity of time and space, using nothing more than photons of light and electrons. In this diagram of an atom, a photon expands through space as a wave particle function of light. When it makes contact with the electrons on the surface of the atom, the wave function will collapse into a new photon particle and into a new moment in time and space. There will be a quantum leap of energy creating a wave particle function of future possibilities. In this way, two-dimensional space on the surface of the atom expands into three-dimensional space-time. Because the wave function collapses into a moment in time and also into a quantum particle, we have the infinity of time and space, or space-time. This is a continuous process within our universe called stimulated emissions that creates a chain reaction of photon-electron couplings creating the continuum of the forward momentum of time and the infinity of space-time. Time only moves forward because the probability of the wave function only works one way. We always know the position and momentum of a quantum particle in the past. In this diagram of an atom surrounded by photon-electron couplings, feed feedback from other atoms will create sets of infinities. Each set of infinities will be a set of fractional self-similarities, creating their own infinity of time and space. Any object will collapse the wave function, but because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function, we have free will to create our own future. If the observer does not collapse the wave function, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own expanding quantum particle wave function. At a fundamental quantum level, the observer is the observed within his or her own created space-time. The wave particle duality of light or electromagnetic radiation is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. In this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the particle wave duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. In this theory there is no absolute or universal time because atoms create their own time relative to their position and momentum. Because of this the individual observer is the only true reference frame. Because this is a continuous process at the same speed that light moves, the wave function of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. However insane this theory might sound, it can explain the paradoxes and weirdness of the quantum world. We have entanglement because light moves through space but not time, as a wave-particle function. The polarization of two photons will be set at the creation of its own expanding quantum particle wave function. This will remain the same however great the distance between them becomes, because when their par wave-particle function collapses, it will represent the same moment in time for both photons. We have a measurement problem or uncertainty principle because the quantum particle will only have a position in time and space if the wave particle function collapses. If the wave particle function does not collapse into a moment of time, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own wave particle function. 
Therefore, the more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure of where it is. This is because, to observe the quantum particle, we create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing the particle wave function into a moment of time and space that is part of the observer's own created space-time. This can explain what the observer actually sees. In this diagram of a laser beam, is sent through a slit. The observer will then adjust the slit so less of the light can pass through it. The observer will see the beam get narrower and narrower as the slit is adjusted closer together. But when the slit gets to the quantum level, the light will start expanding into a quantum wave particle function. When this wave function comes in contact with an object or observer, it will collapse into a new moment of time and space. In this way, creation is being created continuously. In this theory, energy equals mass, linked to the Lorentz contraction of time. The atom's own rest mass has its own rest energy, and it is this energy that creates each new expanding quantum wave particle function. The more energy or mass, the slower time runs. Because the Lorentz contraction is infinite, our universe is a set of infinities within infinity, a time within a space-time, a square within a square, a rhyme within a rhyme. The reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of the continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles of space and time. Because of this, we have a continuous expansion at the atomic level and the continuum of, the, of time and space that can always be divided into sets of infinities. This theory unites classical mechanics of Newton and quantum mechanics into one unified theory. Just like Newton's first law of motion, the quantum particle wave function will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. The only problem is the external force can only see one moment of infinity 